Greetings to all of you. I want to talk today about the upcoming powerful conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus on April 20th. But before I get into that, I want to just say a few words about my recent experience in Egypt, leading a group there to culminating in our ceremony in the King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid the night before the total solar eclipse. And I want to express my gratitude for all of you who joined us in spirit during the time of that ceremony. We felt your presence in a very powerful way. And it was truly a remarkable experience to be toning and chanting and sending out healing energy around the globe in that powerful chamber. And to me, the pyramid was more activated than I've ever experienced it before. And the theme of our time in the King's Chamber for that ceremony was how do we honor what needs to die in order to allow what needs to be birthed anew? So individually, we each took a turn in the sarcophagus and honored what we were releasing in order to open more fully into our true selves, into who we're meant to be on the earth during this time, to be in alignment with our soul's path and purpose. And we were collectively honoring the paradigms that need to end in our world for us to move into the new birth, the new earth, the new paradigms of the age of Aquarius. And it was particularly powerful when we were meditating and sending energy of love and compassion and peace and healing around the globe. And it was extraordinary to be seeding that in the collective at the time of the dark of the moon to then be more fully activated the next night at the time of the total solar eclipse. And we again gathered and did ceremony that evening to help activate those energies. As one person in the group said, she, she saw the energies of the pyramid during our ceremony as this profound golden light extending down into the earth, up into the sky, emanating out from the pyramid to surround the globe with healing energy. So we felt your presence there. We also felt very powerfully the presence of angelic beings and other galactic beings who were joining in with us. So thank you for being a part of that and for the ways in which we are all supporting these healing shifts on the earth to support us in moving into the new forms, the new paradigms, of love and truth and justice and peace on the planet. Now let me talk about the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction on April 20th. And remember that these conjunctions happen every 14 years. And I'd like to talk about the one that preceded this conjunction that we'll experience on April 20th that's leading into this powerful time to launch a new 14-year cycle. And Jupiter and Uranus, when they come together, is a profound combination activating new forms, new paradigms. Remember that Uranus is the planet that is about our connection to truth, justice, our it's the higher octave of Mercury and our connection to divine mind. So it supports us in cutting through illusion, seeing to the heart of things, releasing what's out of balance, what needs to be cleared. And when it's in conjunction with Jupiter, Jupiter is supporting that, further activating that. And Uranus in its influence on Jupiter is helping us break out of beliefs and ways that we may be viewing things that need to be shattered, that need to be reformed. So the combination is very much about the activation of new paradigms, 
new ways of thinking, new ways of being, and very much about seeing through illusion to see truth and to be moving into alignment with our true selves and what is true and in right balance on the planet. Uranus is the planet that's associated with the energies and principles of the cosmos. It's guiding us to shatter and break out of ways of being that are out of alignment with the energies of the cosmos. So it's guiding us into more consciousness, more clarity, more of a sense of truth, and the capacity to activate and begin to manifest the new paradigms that we're needing to move into. Remember, we've been through this prolonged process of Pluto in Capricorn, deconstructing, tearing down the old paradigms, now moving into Aquarius to move more to move fully into Aquarius at the end of 2024, activating these new energies of the age of Aquarius. And I think this conjunction with Jupiter and Uranus is profoundly supporting our getting clarity about what are these new paradigms? How do we see them? How do we activate them? How do we begin to manifest them? Before I look at the chart for this conjunction with Jupiter and Uranus, let me just look with you back 14 years to the one that preceded this, that's ending as we start this new cycle. The last conjunction of Jupiter and Uranus was January 4th, 2011, with Uranus and Jupiter at 27 degrees of Pisces. What's significant about that configuration is it was moving into the energies of Pisces, supporting us in dreaming, imagining, beginning to intuit new forms that we could move into. As Pluto had moved into Capricorn and was at the time of this conjunction conjunct the North Node, you had this whole stellium in Capricorn at the time of that last conjunction. But in particular, Pluto conjunct the North Node in Capricorn, transformation of systems and structures and paradigms that need to be reformed. And this conjunction supporting us in dreaming new forms into being. I also think it's significant that it's in the sign of Pisces, which is associated with our connection with spirit, with our connection with the oneness of all that is. So helping us tap into that knowing from our intuition and a deeper spiritual understanding. It's also significant that the conjunction was in a close connection with Black Moon Lilith, opposite Juno, trining Venus. I really see this conjunction as activating the wisdom of the sacred feminine. This, I think, is reinforced by the fact that where that conjunction occurred in the sky was here in the stars of Pisces, just above the stars of Cetus, guiding us to move into these new ways of seeing, believing, of imagining our future through connecting with the wisdom of the deep and the wisdom of the sacred feminine. Part of what I talk about in an ongoing way in my videos is how if we are to move into the age of Aquarius and the paradigms we're meant to move into, it is very much interwoven with our reclaiming, remembering, reconnecting with the wisdom of the sacred feminine to balance it with the wisdom of the sacred masculine. And remember that the wisdom of the sacred feminine is about relationship being in right relationship with all that is, ourselves, each other, the earth, 
the cosmos. The sacred feminine is also about honoring the sacredness of all of life and relating to each other and the energies of the earth and sky from a place of compassion, from that deep, sacred relationship and connection. So as we're completing that cycle, we're now moving into a new cycle with Uranus and Jupiter. And now they are in the sign of Taurus. And let me show you the chart. We now have Uranus conjunct Jupiter at 21 degrees of Taurus. What I find significant about this is if you see that last cycle of Uranus conjunct Jupiter and Pisces as begin to dream the new forms into being open to your connection with the cosmos, remember the energies and wisdom of the sacred feminine, dive into that understanding of our connection with source the oneness of all that is. As the old forms are deconstructing, remember what's been lost. Reclaim the lost wisdom of the age of Pisces, which is about that mystical awareness that the wisdom of the divine is within us. And when we come from our hearts with compassion and come back into right relationship with all that is, we come back into that balance and harmony and interconnectedness with each other and all of life. And now with Uranus and Jupiter in Taurus, the message is manifest these new forms. Taurus is also a sign that's related to the energies of the sacred feminine and the sacredness of all of life, the sacredness of the earth, the sacredness of all the creative expressions of cosmic consciousness. And this combination is guiding us to move into new forms, new beliefs, new ways of being, and to manifest these forms in our experience here on the earth, in our relationship with the earth, and to begin to develop these new paradigms that are about being in right relationship and rebalancing the energies of the sacred masculine and sacred feminine. It's remarkable to me that this conjunction now is also in an aspect to Black Moon Lilith, to the moon. It's also in aspect to Mars and to Ceres. So, Again, I see it's significant that it's an aspect to so many of the planets, asteroids, or symbols of the sacred feminine. In its connection with Ceres, it's very much about our reconfiguring our relationship with the earth and the life on the earth and remembering the sacredness of all of the life around us breaking out of the forms and paradigms of the past that have been so much about disconnection and destruction to come back into connection, come back into honoring the sacredness of the life around us and being in right relationship. It's interesting to me that, again, we have an aspect of Black Moon Lilith, which is very much about reclaiming the energy of the sacred feminine and remembering the importance of true mutuality, right balance between the genders and in our integration of the energies of the sacred feminine and sacred masculine. And it's interesting that in both the conjunction in 2011 and now in 2024, there is a sextile to Mars guiding us to reconfigure our actions. And here Mars is in Pisces. In 2011, we have this wide sextile with Mars in Capricorn. So part of what we're seeing is the importance of 
reconfiguring how we work with Mars energy. In this conjunction, bringing out the energy of Mars in Pisces, acting from compassion, from our capacity to be sensitive and empathic with each other. And again, to reweave the energies of the sacred feminine so that we are in balance with how we are in relationship with each other and all of life. The meaning of the Sabian symbol for 21 degrees of Taurus is a white dove over troubled waters. I think that is a profound image for the times that we're in. We are in such turbulent times. We are experiencing so much chaos, disorder, polarization, reactivity, violence on the planet. And I see that as a manifestation of the profound transformation that we're in. And some are clinging to the old paradigms and the old forms and ramping up those out of balance, destructive paradigms that are about disconnection, power over, control, conquer or be conquered. And we are continuing to be in these energies with Pluto now in Aquarius saying, let go of those old paradigms and now activate the Aquarian paradigms that are about justice, collaboration, co-creating a new world together, coming back into balance. And Uranus and Jupiter are guiding us, activating these new ways of seeing, new beliefs, new ways of manifesting the paradigms that are an expression of truth and justice and our capacity to believe Jupiter and have faith in this new future we're moving into. So a white dove over troubled waters is about how do we, if we are holding that higher consciousness, fly above the turbulence and hold that energy of peace and compassion and hope and trust in the new forms that can emerge so that we are seeding that higher consciousness and that energy of healing into the collective. It's critical in this time that we not get mired in the turbulence or identified with it or caught in reactivity, but to see this as the disorder and chaos and turbulence that's preceding the new birth, the new earth, the new paradigms. Again, the theme of our ceremony in the King's Chamber was death, rebirth, what needs to end so that new life can emerge. This is the profound time that we're in on the planet right now. And this conjunction is supporting us in being the white doves, holding that vision and sense of faith and hope an awareness of what we're moving into that is radically different than the destruction and chaos and imbalance of the past. So as we look at the Kuiper Belt objects and centaurs and other planetary bodies that are active at the time of this conjunction, I think it's very significant that we have Nisus sextiling Uranus and Jupiter and Chericlo squaring them. So these active energies of healing, the healing centaurs, supporting us in releasing the ancestral lineage of trauma and suffering, supporting us, Chericlo, in holding a healing presence in this time of transformation to support our moving in to the healing paradigms of the Aquarian age. And all of this follows shortly after that incredibly powerful total solar eclipse with Chiron exactly by degree and minute 
conjunct the sun and moon, beaming healing energy to us here on the earth, calling us into a healing process individually and collectively to be able to manifest and move into these new forms. And now let me show you where in the sky this powerful conjunction will be on April 20th. I think it's truly extraordinary that at the time of this conjunction, Jupiter and Uranus will be exactly between the stars of Perseus and Cetus the whale here in this powerful part of the sky called In the Stair of Cetus. I've talked about the meaning of this part of the sky in many of my earlier videos, and it's a very powerful story we have here in the stars that is shaped by our understanding of Greek mythology and the story of Perseus, the warrior who ends up slaying Medusa, who is the archetype of an ancient great goddess and is trying to rescue Andromeda, the maiden that has been tied to the rocks because of the fear of her parents that Poseidon is going to destroy their kingdom with the storms of the sea. And Perseus uses the head of Medusa, the stare of Medusa that can turn anything to stone to slay the, the sea monster to rescue Andromeda. This is such a story of the patriarchal hero who is setting out to conquer the enemy and rescue the damsel in distress. The interesting thing is this story is encoded with trauma. If you explore Perseus's history, he has been traumatized. Andromeda has been traumatized. Medusa, who carries this energy of ancient sacred wisdom, has now been demonized and has been murdered by Perseus, who then uses that energy to destroy the whale. The ancient wise energy of the deep sea, the whales that hold the memories of our source and the memories of our deep life experience here on earth. So it's such a powerful story that's encoding the energies of power over patriarchal culture, the warrior slaying and destroying the symbols and energies of the sacred feminine, to then be in a position of prominence and power over in relationship with women in relationship with the energies of the sacred feminine. It's the rise and prominence of the energies of the sacred masculine, which we need to experience on the planet. The energies of the sacred masculine are about the hero's journey. They are about our discovery and expression of our sense of self. They are about our exploring our left brain ways of knowing and understanding things. What is dangerous is when it becomes out of balance and it becomes a power over destructive, polarizing dynamic, which this myth represents. And I think it is extraordinary that this conjunction of Uranus and Jupiter is in the middle of this polarity saying, shatter those old forms and beliefs cut through the illusion and the imbalanced paradigms of the past to move into new ways of seeing, new ways of being. And what might that look like if we take this story and bring it into a balance of the energies of the sacred masculine and sacred feminine? Then we have Perseus the warrior the energies of the sacred masculine expressed in the hero's journey that can now be about service, service to the earth and humanity rather than power over and destruction 
and violence. And we reclaim an honoring of the wisdom of the whale, the wisdom of the deep, the wisdom of the sacred feminine to bring these energies into balance, to honor that energy of harmony, oneness, right relationship that comes to us through the sacred feminine and integrate it with the energies of the sacred masculine so that we act on that wisdom and that compassion and that understanding of the importance of our interconnectedness with each other and all that is and being in right harmony and right balance. Then we're bringing those energies into balance, into what the age of Aquarius is calling us into, to be then creating new forms of community that are about justice, truth, collaboration, co-creation. We maintain the sovereignty of the self, but in the sanctity of community and in unity with cosmic consciousness. This conjunction is calling us to wake up, to let go of the patriarchal paradigms of the past, to let go of the power over dynamics that have been so destructive on the planet, to honor the hero's journey, but the hero's journey that is about seeking my own identity and gifts to bring them into community in a way that they are of service to others rather than to control or to destroy. And it means remembering the wisdom of the life around us and the sacredness of the earth and our connection with source that reminds us that we are a part of the oneness of all that is. So at the powerful time of this conjunction, I encourage you to take time to meditate and journal and look at what ways of thinking, what old paradigms are you needing to let die to allow this powerful conjunction to activate new ways of thinking, new ways of being, new ways of seeing the paradigms that we're moving into so that you can be a part of this community that's forming around the globe that is coming from a place of higher consciousness with a commitment to manifesting these new paradigms and co-creating a new world together. This is our opportunity and this is what these energies are activating for us and supporting us in. So let us continue to connect with each other, to support each other in releasing the paradigms of the past, trusting our capacity to co-create these new paradigms together, and to be the white doves flying fearlessly over the troubled waters, holding this hope and vision for what we can be, what we can co-create on this earth as we honor the energies of the earth and sky that are guiding us into a new world and new ways of being. Blessings and love to all of you. Blessed be.